nuts. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Lead Farmer 73 and Late Night Lead Lives. Or you could say lead, lives, lead, lives, lead lives, lead lives. You can say it however you want to. To the fullest. How y'all doing tonight? Good to see you. So if I keep looking down, that's because my screen is right here. I want to say what's up to everybody. What is y'all doing up so late? I thought I was going to be the only one. Um talking about obsessions obsessions obsessed people that's obsessed you ever see somebody's obsessed they so obsessed that they got a one-track mind how y'all doing tonight good to see you uh leslie said we need to sleep <laughs> don't look like it <laughs> hey trina's journey Hey, Unbiased. Hey, Willie, Vesma, South Girl, Leslie, and Ford Barbecue. Where you been, Aunt Ford? Good to see you. Um, what I'm going to be doing tonight is, is conquering one of my obsessions. I've been obsessing over something for about, I don't know, seven years. And I want to talk about it. I want to get it off my chest. <laughs> hey, uh, game nerd mom. Hey, celestial, celestial insights. How you doing? Hey, Benji. So, uh, Shy Town, Cindy, uh, MTGV Crime Podcast. What's going on, my sister? How you doing? Let me see. Where am I at? Where am I? I left my mouse. That's okay. I work it. I work it. It's good to see everybody in here. Hold on a second. Uh, let me get my my little thing popping off. I just jumped in too fast. Uh, da, 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 da. Damn, when did I do this? I'm looking at. <laughs> let me just leave well enough alone. Let me leave well enough alone. How's everybody doing? Listen, I thought of something. I thought of something. This actually legal. And I'm going to share it with you. This, <clears throat> my dear friends, can anybody, anybody right off the top of your head tell me what that is? Right off the top of your head. Anybody. Y'all know uh, I'm a 24-7 prepper. Gardener, just because y'all don't see gardening don't mean it's gone. Grown with Hudson, everybody got it right. Chine Moss, Grown with Hudson, everybody. That is right. This is a piece of Lillian that I took off and it just been sitting outside growing. So what I'm about to do, like I always do about this time, I'm going to have y'all join me. If you don't join me, come back and watch this video. I'm going to try to do this immediately in the first part of this video. So you probably don't have to listen to me ramble on for however long I'm going to be here. So first thing, family, y'all know it's been years I've been using these. The clear and the color cups, peekaboo cups. This will keep you. From being, you can be nosy without disturbing the roots of your plant. You can just keep pulling that out. You want to see if your cutting done rooted yet? I'm doing this for all the people that have gotten cuttings, have purchased cuttings from me. And the people that's wondering where your cuttings are, they are coming. They're on their way. Sorry for the delay. Um, there was a lot. The order was huge. So they're coming. So this is this is what's coming right now. Everybody bought everybody 
I'm going to say about 80% of the people that purchased those cuttings from me, whether it was mulberry, uh, elderberry, pear, apple, whatever it was, you bought them and then you turned around and said, Leah, what do I do with it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know? So I noticed that most of the folks that bought the cuttings have no idea or experience with cuttings ever. So I'm here to let you know. I'm going to do this. I got plenty of videos on this, but you can do it yourself. Now, I'm going to show you what I use, okay? I used to use potting soil. Just plain old potting soil, no brand, whatever. I don't get all into that. Just potting more or potting soil, seed mix. This is, this is Lead Farmer's favorite, vermiculite. Listen close. I'm showing y'all the actual bag. I keep these on, on hand at all times, no matter what. This is like a gigantic bag. Of, it's, it weighs about 30 pounds when it's full. Vermiculite. Listen close because I'm going to tell you something about this before you go rushing out buying it. Vermiculite. Fairly cheap. Lasts a long time. This holds moisture. Pyrolite. Pyrolite is those little white rocks that you always see in your plant when you buy it, right? The little white, look like styrofoam, little rocks. That's what it is. Okay. So what we're going to be doing today is I like to mix a 50-50 mix of vermiculite and perlite into a big five-gallon bucket. Depending on how much... <laughs> Depending on how much you plan on using your cuttings or whatever, you mix as much of this as you want, but always try to, I always try to keep a 50-50 mix. If you put one cup of vermiculite in there, put one cup of pyrolite in there. Okay, so this batch, I've already pre-mixed the batch. I mixed the vermiculite, the pyrolite, 50-50 mix, and then I put a 50% mix of normal, regular old potting soil that you can get from anywhere, dollar store, whatever. I, it don't matter. Just plain old potting soil, okay? You could say that, yeah, potting mix. I even give you the name that I got today. It's expert gardening potting mix from Wally World, okay? So here's my mix. Listen to me close because you will wreck your buffet if you don't listen to this. Before you do not pour that vermiculite or that perlite inside your house. I don't care if it's raining outside. Go outside and preferably you need water on hand and wet this down immediately because the smoke, the dust that's in these bags from this stuff will screw your life up. Okay. So anybody, have anybody ever dealt with, before I go any further, I want to talk about that. You ever dealt with vermiculite or perlite? Anybody? Hey, grown Hudson. If y'all dealt with this, let me know. If you haven't, if you haven't, say, no, if you have, say yes. Okay, Rios know. Rios Family Garden knows. Okay. So for everybody that hasn't, that, that went fast. For everybody that has never dealt with it, wet it first. Wet it first. You, you cannot hurt this stuff if you wet it and leave it in the bag. It might grow a little moss on it or something, but usually it dries out if you poke a couple holes under the bag, set it in your garage. Do not pour this stuff dry. If you pour especially the pure light, especially this, if you pour this, that 
fine white dust will ruin your whole week. If you breathe just a little bit of this stuff in, you're going to feel it immediately. It's, I don't know if you've ever, you know, was a kid or an adult and ac accidentally mixed um, your dish soap with some bleach without water and got that chemical reaction that ran you out the house. Anybody ever done that? If that little bit of white smoke go in your lungs, it's going to do you like that. And it's going to irritate you for the rest of the doggone week. If somebody said they they um, they took an asbestos class, that's, that's about how it's, it's that dangerous. It'll mess you up. Okay. So before you... <clears throat> Before you mess with pure light, wet it first. I I wet it. I put water in my bucket first, and I take scoops. I don't pour it out the bag. I take scoops of it, okay, to minimize that dust. Wear a mask if you have to. I don't care. Wear something over your freaking mouth and nose. You don't want these problems, okay? It's all natural, but it's like rock dust, and it will screw you up. With that being said, I had to get that out the way. I know I went on with that a little while, but I had to get that out the way because it's that bad. And you, I don't want nobody to ever have to experience that. It will send you to the hospital. It's all natural, but it'll send you to the hospital real smooth like, all right? So I've already made my mix. I'm going to show you how simple this is. Here's my peekaboo cups. You get a clear cup and you get a colored cup, something that's going to block the sunlight, block the light. Okay. Now you can just take some scissors and see the edge of the cup right there. You just cut, cut the little pinch that butt off just like that. One little hole to do it. I'm trying to see if y'all can see that. One little hole. See that? One little hole is all you need. One little hole. Take you a scoop of your mix. Put it in a cup. I'm doing this quick and live, just like that. Now, remember, my mix is already wet. It's already moist. It's nothing else to do. Do not water this in. It's already super wet. If I mash this down, water will come out. That's how the, the vermiculite literally holds that much water, even better than soil. Okay. Put that to the side. Now I'm going to take my tree and I'm going to find a good piece. Always try to make your cutting less than six inches long. If you go further than six inches, I'm not going to say that it won't work. But if you want to guarantee your cutting to work better, keep it around six inches long. That's why I always send y'all about six to eight inch cuttings. That's why I do that, because that helps ensure that your cutting is going to work out. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to take this cutting right here. That's about that's about eight inches, six inches or so. I'm not even going to take this. Yeah, I am. I'm going to cut this right here. Let me see if y'all can see this. Hey, let me see. Can I want to make sure y'all see it. Okay. I'm right here. I'm going to cut that baby right there. That's what I'm taking. Okay. Y'all see that? All I'm going to do is just snip, snip these leaves down at the bottom. We won't be needing them. You don't need a lot of leaves. I like to keep about six leaves on there. Count from the top. Two, three, four, five, six. That's good enough for me. They don't need a lot. If you have too many leaves on your cutting, it's going to waste the energy trying to keep these leaves alive instead of making roots. Trust me on this. I've been doing this for years. Go back and check my record, check my videos, and then look at my success record. I could do this with my eyes closed. 
Now, now that I got a little cutting, I'm going to scrape the end of this just a little bit. It's just like that. Like it done broke off or something, you know? Just kind of hurt it, damage it a little bit. Can y'all see that? I'm just doing it. I'm just doing whatever. Just a little bit. Just off the edges. Just like it just fell off. Okay? I'm simulating the tree being ripped off by an animal. Like me. Now. You don't have to use your saliva. I just forgot my water. And I ain't about to get up and go get it. And I'm not going to use my water because I need it. So, this is rooting hormone. And before we get into this conversation, it don't matter whether you're using rooting hormone. People say, oh, that's not natural. I don't, I don't care. I'm telling you how to do it first. Whatever other holistic way you want to do it, that's up to you. I have used weeping willow sap. I have used honey. I have used rooting hormone and I have used nothing at all. And they all work. They all root. I have nothing against one or the other. When you, when you don't use anything, it takes a little longer to root. If you use honey, weeping willow sap, or this rooting hormone, it seems to speed the process up. That's it. So all I'm going to do is just dip this in this rooting hormone, just like that. And I'm going to get that all the way up as far just like this. It ain't much that goes into this. Now, I didn't bring my pencil, which I usually do, but I got one of my coffee stirs. Let me just set that in here real and I'm going to poke a hole right in the middle. Normally, I just use a pencil. I'm going to tell you why I always poke that hole instead of just ramming it down in this soil. Because I want that rooting hormone or the honey or the willow sap to stick to the tree bark. So I want to get it in the hole first. Stick that right down in there like that. I don't quite, I'm going to hit the bottom and I'm going to bring it back up about an inch, okay? Now I am going to pack the soil around it. Not tight, tight, but tight. I just don't want it moving around. I don't want it too tight, but I don't want it loose either, okay? So I'm packing the soil around. Okay, now what you have is a cutting that will be rooted in about, don't time it, usually about 30 to 60 days, you will have a fully rooted lemon tree, not a cutting anymore. It will be a full-fledged lemon tree because it will have its own roots. That goes for your mulberry, the blackberry, the raspberry, the pear, the peaches, everything that I've sent you the same way. All of it, all of it works the same way. I've done this, all half the trees I got out here came from cuttings just like that, just like this, okay? Before they made it illegal, this is how I was giving people cuttings of Lillian, just like this. Homestead Heart, Homestead Heart, right off the top of my head, Homestead Heart, um, everything fresh and sassy, just right off the top of my head, are two people. I even think Ession's family garden, I think I sent him one years ago. I, I can't, don't quote me. But I do know um, Homestead Hearts is huge now, and I sent her one like this. Now it's huge, loaded with fruit. So is uh, everything fresh and sassy. I sent her something like this, now it's huge for the fruit. These grow super fast, super fast. 
And this is pretty much the same thing you buy out of the store, okay? This is not a grafted cutting. This is going to be a standard cutting. It's going to be a standard tree. Now, for instance, over the years, if you go back in my lemon tree video or my grafting video, what y'all going to see is actual proof that I've, I've been doing this for years. You're going to see my proof of me doing it, taking air layers, taking cuttings, and you're going to see the first and you're going to see the end. And you're even going to see the progress of me planting these same cuttings or air layers somewhere out on my yard. Okay. So this is how you do this. Now, this is just one cutting that I took off of uh, um, Lillian maybe a year ago. And here it is. I got a bunch of these out in the yard just sitting around. Every time I walk through my yard, y'all see that mess over there? It's a bunch of these just sitting over there. So this is how you expand your orchard. You don't got to keep wasting your money. What you do have to do is be patient. Because if you got the patience to sit and wait till this roots, you got a whole new tree. Now, y'all know right now, a tree this a tree a little bigger than this, it's gonna run you anywhere from $24 to $58. Y'all know this. I ain't gotta lie about it. Okay. Now, to show you guys, so you can be nosy, this is why I call this the peekaboo cup. Because you take that clear cup, you take your color cup. Now remember, you got that hole in the bottom. So you can water this. Once it start rooting, you can water this. Okay. For now, leave it alone. You put this into the colored cup to simulate it being underground so the roots won't be disturbed by light. That's it. So every time you want to come in and see if your, your tree has rooted and is it ready for transfer, you just pick it up peekaboo and check it out. I've been doing these peekaboo cups for years just go back and check my record okay ain't got nothing to lie about i want everybody to be successful on this because this was one of my obsessions i couldn't stop snipping my trees and i gave a lot of people a lot of good fruit trees over the years some of y'all watching me right now may be some recipients so why am i doing this let me get in here I i'm going to tell y'all why i'm doing this right now because these are going to be free cuttings. I'm giving these away for free. I'm giving them away for free. Free. Yes. But... There's a catch. Y'all knew it was a catch. It's a catch. I'm getting them ready now because I will be giving them away free in February at Greenhouse Lounge Survival Slumber Party Camp in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I know somebody like, I can't stop. don't cuss me out, okay? I'm going to be giving those away free those are going to be some of the gifts that we give away. So I got all these lemon trees sitting out here. I said, I can give them away legally, give them away, not sell them. And I'm in the state of South Carolina. I'm not shipping them out of state. So it's totally legal. Totally legal. So just to let you guys know, this is where I'm at. Do I have any questions about my obsession? Any questions whatsoever? Because I'm about to just keep snipping these. Because I can, off of this tree, off of this one tree alone, I'm going to take all of this off. I'm going to take all of this, all of this, gonna, and then I'm going to take all of these crumbs around here. 
this gonna give me about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is gonna give me about anywhere from 10 to 15 trees, well, 16 trees. And then this base is just gonna keep on growing and do it all over again. All right, any any questions whatsoever? Just so you know, okay, I am going to be giving them away to people here in South Carolina, all right? People that are here in South Carolina, I gotta, I gotta clarify that. All right, let's get in here. Is it is it just for citrus trees? Trina's journey. When you say is it just for citrus trees, what do you mean? My my method? No, I, I said it's for it's for any cuttings. Just about hardwood cuttings is a little hard, a little trickier. Let me see. I missed the beginning. What kind of soil goes in the cup? Just go check the video out. It, it so you can get it definite straight to the state to the dome how many fruit trees do you want how many fruit trees do you want i don't quite understand your question um rio's family said it's illegal to sell the cuttings yes um when it comes to citrus uh they passed a law a little while back made it illegal to to sell citrus from state to state now yeah So if you end up at uh, survival camp with us, the survival slumber party, tour of the tents, show me your tents. If you end up there with us, you have a great chance of winning one of these beautiful trees. And I'm going to have mulberry trees. I'm going to have elderberry trees, uh, lemon trees, orange trees, you name it. I'm going to try to bring as much as I can, as much as I can. I'm even thinking of um I'm even thinking of bringing a second trailer to bring more stuff. Okay, let me see. Let's see where we at. Azare said I can drive. See, I got my trees from early world on sale at the end of season. They're less than three years old. Should I wait and do cuttings after they start fruiting or is it fine to start now? Um, You can start now, but let me show you something. I think all the fruit fell off of this one. No, I left the one with all the fruit on it outside. No, 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 no. You see those? Those are little fruiting buds. Here, look, here you go. I thought this one had a few buds on it. See that bud there? Those are flowers. Those are look like male flowers. And every one of these little baby buds like this. Let me, let me lock it in there for you. See those little tiny buds right there? Those little tiny balls on the tip right here right here those are flowers those are going to turn into flowers the flowers turn into fruit if your cutting starts to bud out you're not going to want to hear this if you start having buds like that on the end of your cutting this is going to hurt your feelings right here Take them off. Get rid of them. Take the flowers off. If you end up having a little tiny lemon on the tip, take it off. Or your, your cutting may fail. Um, and this is why. Because that cutting is trying to, every little piece of energy that it has is trying to keep that fruit alive. No matter what happens, that fruit is going to either be about big as a doggone gumball, 
and still never get ripe or it's going to taste like crap no matter what it wasted energy trying to produce this lemon take it off what that's showing you is that limb right there is very productive take that lemon off as soon as you get that thing rooted it's going to refruit probably in the next 30 days i can't make this up ask anybody i've ever gave a cutting to and i've never been wrong yet Take that fruit off and give it about 30 to 60 days. You're going to have more lemons than you ever dreamed of. If that piece has a lemon or a flower on it, you take that off. That's showing you how productive it is. It is going, you pull that one off, let it, let that root structure get uh, established. Lemons everywhere. I can't, I've been doing this too long. I know. I'm, I'm not even, I'm going to pat myself on the back. I know what I'm talking about when it comes to this. All right, let's see. Am I trying to fill my entire property with fruit trees? Um, well, are you interested in filling your property with fruit trees, my friend? My brother, what's going on so good, Gardner? What's up, man? So if you're going to have some of those Miwa Kumqua cuttings, I may have to drive from Texas to South Carolina. Mm, could be. Could be. You, you know what? I haven't even shown my Miwa Kumqua tree in a while. He out there loaded with fruit. Loaded. Stupid loaded. I may have to take you up on that, brother. <laughs> I may have to take you up on that. Uh, let's see. Hey, AM Art Sports, uh, related to air layering cuttings, is it okay to do a walnut tree this time of year? Absolutely not. Don't do it. You want to do an air layer. When it comes to nut trees and, and hardwood trees like that, cuttings work. But you better be doing it after first, last frost. Start at that last frost date when, before you go to starting. Make sure it ain't no more cold coming in. That's when you start, when the, when the sap in your tree, the juices start running in all them branches and start uh, putting leaves on a tree. If everybody don't know when the... When I say the fluids start running in your tree, this is how you know. Once your tree starts, uh, it's about to bud out and leaf out, the, the juices are starting to run in that tree and it lets the bark slip. It makes everything better. And trust me, everything works faster that way. Trust me on it. Late, the later in the year, the longer it takes. I just checked those air layers. I mean, uh, yeah, the air layers that I did, the chili dog method on my pear tree. And I still haven't seen no roots. I, I believe it's been over 30 days. The later in the year it you do it, the longer it takes. Because that juice ain't flowing the way it used to. Okay, let me get down here. Say, Leg, can you do it with a fig also? Yes, you can. Yes. Matter of fact, a fig will grow like wildfire. Let's see. Should mulberry cuttings be six as well? I try to keep everything around six. Everything. I do. Okay. I, that was something I learned years ago. And I had to find out for myself. Because I was trying to do whole one foot cuttings and stuff. And that whole top end of die. And the bottom I end up dying. And I was like, it got to be something to that. That's six inches. I better stick to that. And I've never, that's why I only do it with six inches. I don't care how nice the tree is. You cannot rush the progress. You can't start with a two foot piece and hope it root, okay? Because it's trying to keep that two feet of tree alive. It's not enough. It has no root system to bring up the nourishment to keep that whole tree alive. That's why it dies. Here's another thing just to let you guys know. You can cover this with a like a Ziploc bag. It does not have to be closed at the bottom, 
but to keep the moisture in. If not, you know, every day come by and just spritz it once on the leaves. Don't put no fertilizer in your water. Just spritz the leaves. That's it. Keep it moist. If you put a Ziploc bag over it, that starts the greenhouse effect. You don't have to do the spritzing. Okay. Let me see. Let me keep going. Let me keep going. You, Rio's family, I, like I said before, you can do this with most trees. Uh, low quats, low quats is one of those hardwood trees that it'll work. Just it's so it's a little bit tougher. Just do it at the beginning of the spring, like I said before. Okay, do it in the spring because those hardwood cuttings, nut trees and low quat trees, they take they take a while. Oh, I'm, I'm way behind. Let me get down to the bottom here. Okay. I'm trying to figure out what's too many fruit trees. What too many fruit trees will fit on two acres or how many fruit trees will fit on two acres. I just bought 40 citrus trees, mulberry trees. Okay. Well, you about to have a lot of fun, huh? Lead, is there a certain age or size that a tree should be before taking cuttings? You can't be crazy about it. You know, it can't be a seedling that just sprouted a, a few days ago. You know what I'm saying? If it's something like this, this is like a year old, you know, stuff like that. You can, you can do stuff like that. But it depends. Are you trying to kill the plant when you take the cutting? Because that defeats the purpose. The whole purpose of taking the cutting is because you want to keep the original tree. You just want a piece of it. So if the piece you take in is bigger than the actual tree, then you're, you're defeating the purpose. Okay. Dave Busby, what's up, man? Say, I did the chili dog with the Meyer lemon tree and it worked out perfectly. I told you, man, I, I perfected the craft years ago. It just works. It just works. Um, let's see. Led my, hey, Miss Shirley OG, how you doing? Say, led my Meyer lemons have plenty of leaves, but no food, but no, oh, but no fruit. What am I doing wrong? Okay, are you growing it from seed? Or did you buy the lemon tree? Uh, Miss Shirley OG, email me, okay? So so I can I can guide you through that because I need to know a lot more from you. Let's see. Hey, Keisha uh, says, hey, Led, I bought a lemon tree from a nursery beginning of the summer. One lemon was on it. At the beginning, it produced three lemons, but they're still green. What happened? It's, it's just too little. You cannot, you cannot force a little baby tree to fruit. You just can't force it. And as a matter of fact, and here's the other thing. It's just not ready. You know, I like to look at fruit trees like I look at people. It's, it's, it, it's not ready to have a child. It's still too young to have a child. When you look at your fruit trees and look at your orchard and your garden, the same way you look at humanity, would it be right for you to force a child to have a child? No. It's no different with these trees. And we, we're, we're making trees um, like they're not alive. We're talking about them like they're not actual living beings, which they are. Just because they don't speak to us the way we want them to speak to us means nothing. They pretty much do the same thing we do. They literally have re relations, if you will, in their own way by pollination through air and bees and bugs. So they have to mate too, just like we do. If they're not old enough to bear a child or bear the fruit, they won't. It's no different than us. That fruit will miscarry just like us. 
body and the frame of that it, tree is not ready to produce. Okay, just if you look at it that way, it'll make it'll start making a lot more sense to you. Look at your tree, and if your tree is like this, you're looking like it's just a baby. It's only been around for two years, you know. Don't expect it to work no miracles after a while, because then that gets a little weird. What's up, B. Rich? Good to see you, brother. Say, what's up, Led? In the chat, late to the live. Uh, when you doing sweet <laughs> me, why come quiet? That's what So Good Gardener just said a minute ago. Um, I'm not going to be selling it. I'm, if, if I ever do, I'll be giving it away at camp. Say, Led, you need a shirt that says, I'm going to have to Google that one. I, I, You know what? Somebody said that a long time ago. I'm going to have to do it. I just been so busy. Because sometimes folks got to Google some stuff. Um, how you doing, Charlene Gilbert? Say, when you take a cutting, how often should you water it? That's a tough question. Because you have to, it's no different than a potted plant. If you feel that, where to go? If you feel that cutting soil and that soil isn't lightly moist and stick to your finger like this, you know, like that, like, and you know, it just needs a little water. It does not need a massive watering. Here's the other reason why I do the peekaboo cup. Because say you do water it and say you do over water. It. Number one, this catches the water. This actually will catch that water so you don't overwater it. It drains out the bottom and then lands in here and you pour that excess water off. It does not need water like your hanging plants, okay? All you need, this is just to, this plays several parts. It imitates underground and it's a water catcher. So when you overwater that, you pour that out because the pure light and, and the vermiculite and the potting soil, all of that is holding the moisture. You do not want to over moisture this because this will rot. If you keep this too wet, this that whole stem will rot. Up here will look like it's growing and everything, but down here you will start smelling it. Smell funny. Like, ooh, that stank. You know, that's because it's underground rotten. You got you can't overwater your cuttings. It's just a cutting. It hasn't even started to root yet. It just needs to stay moist, okay? Let me see. How long do you leave cuttings in the pot? When you, um, when you start seeing roots, <clears throat> again, this is why I did the peekaboo cup. Because once you see roots all around this cup, it's time to pull this whole thing out. This whole little plug of soil and everything going to come out with it. You put this in a bigger pot and let it start growing. Okay, you that's common sense. You got to wait till your roots is ready. Once you start seeing all them roots, it's time to trans transfer to a bigger pot, up pot it. Do you keep cuttings inside in a sunny location? Yes, I do. Um, Thank you for that question, uh, River Birch Farm. Do not put your, your cuttings in a super hot, full sun place. Put these in the most shaded place in your yard. I'm talking about a place that never gets direct sun. Never, ever, never, ever. One of my favorite places I use is in my garage. My garage stays hot all year round. It gets plenty of indirect sunlight the sun never hits it and it gets just enough light just enough heat for everything to produce and besides that maybe in front of my garage but other than that nowhere out there in my yard no i take that back under my big tree by the lake it never gets any direct sun okay Hey, Q Williams. Hey, Uncle Led, I bought a fig tree from a big box store last year. And uh, if it fruits this year, do I still take off the new fruit? Okay. 
do I still take off the new fruit? Are you talking about taking off the fruit for cuttings or you're talking about just taking the fruit off the, so the tree can grow? Because taking your fruit off the tree will help the root structure of the tree grow faster. So next year you will have bigger and better fruit because you have a bigger and stronger tree to hold the fruit. So that's completely up to you. I got a lot of trees out there. I just let nature do its thing. If the tree has fruit, I leave the fruit on there. If the tree doesn't fruit, I don't try to force it to fruit anymore. Okay. Let me see. Do you have any experience with plants from fast growing trees? What do you want to know? Tanja, what do you want to know? Hey, Analytic Gardener, how you doing? Good to see you in here. I'm trying to see. That sunny location one, that was a good question. How long we been in here? Okay, we're going to get off in a minute. I just want to just tighten up a couple. I'm going to take one more cutting. I'm going to take a few more questions, and then I'm going to take another cutting, and we'll go from there. Is a, fig, is a fig tree cutting considered to be a citrus cutting? Um, that law you were talking about was new news to me. Okay. But when you say, is a fig tree cutting considered to be a citrus cutting? A fig is not a citrus. A fig cutting is just a fig cutting. This method is universal across the board. This is just a method. This isn't the, the just for citrus, okay? I just happen to have a lemon tree that we're taking cuttings on, if that was your question. Uh, let's see. Say, I have lemon trees on my Eureka now. Should I wait to take the cutting until they ripen? How big is your lemon tree, Rios? Let's see. What's up, Get Ready Prep? And say, have you gotten a chance to take a look at my... No, I, 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 I'm I, so busy. I have not been in my emails yet, okay? Thank you for that, though. Thank you. I'm going to get around to it, but I'm telling you, you y'all have no idea what goes on behind this camera. You have no idea. I'm a I'm gonna get to you, okay? I promise. But it, it takes a lot of time. I got so many emails coming in constantly. Imagine this. Imagine this. Imagine if you got over a hundred emails every day, but they aren't spam. Now, on top of those hundred emails, then you got another hundred worth of spam and then you got more from business situation i need a secretary i truly do i need a i need a secretary you know lady led is running her business i'm running my business and then we got this and it's like whoa so um i'm not brushing you off just oh my god it's is way more than i i could ever handle when you ask God for them blessings, better be ready. Better be ready. I'm telling you, we always looking for that blessing. But when he start to shower them blessings on you, you know what it reminds me of, Lord, and I, I thank you. This is what it reminds me of. You ask for them blessings. You've been begging for them blessings all your life, right? And then it's like playing the lottery. And then you, you didn't you didn't win the lottery, but they say, put your name on the back of your lottery ticket and send it in. And we, you might be able to come to the game show. Guess what? You won the game show. Where they lock you in this booth with a blindfold on and all the blessings. As soon as they say go, you got, you got 
60 seconds while all them blessings is flying around you to catch as many as you possibly can. It's millions of blessings around you and you trying to catch all of them with just your two hands with a blindfold on. That's how I feel every day. I will never complain about my blessings, but at the same time, it's work. Okay, I hope you understand that. Uh, let's see. I just hope y'all understand it. Everybody is always asking, um, but whew. hey, Cassandra said, Led, I really appreciate how you take the time to share your knowledge and help others. You're an awesome person. Thank you, Cassandra. I think you're an awesome person too. Thank you for that. All right. Time to say, I really invested in some camera equipment to record my off-grid adventure. You recently invested in. Okay. Uh, we would love to see that. You should get a channel. You should actually get a thumbnail because that will have people really, truly wanting to see what you're talking about. I think I, I don't know if I answered this. Do you cut new growth from the fig tree to start cuttings? What do you mean by do I do I cut new growth from the fig tree? I cut everything new. If, if, if you're talking about what do I start the cutting? I mean, what do I start the new cutting with? I started with new growth, old growth. It don't matter. A fig tree is going to root no matter what. Okay. Any questions so far? I'm going to, we got a, we got a few minutes left. I'm going to do another quick cutting quick, quickity quick. And I'm going to sit here for the rest of the night and I'm going to just do some cuttings. Hole in the cup. Soil in the cup. Put a hole in the soil. Take the cutting. Six inch cutting. Scrape the cutting a little bit, damage it. Put your rooting hormone on the cutting. Wait. Wet it, dunk it in some water or something so it can stick to that. The hole in the cup, in the soil, put cutting in the hole, go to the bottom and come up about an inch. Now pack the soil firmly, firmly, not tight, but firmly around the cutting. Firmly around the cutting, not too tight because you want those roots to be able to be easy to come out okay and spread out throughout the soil just like that you take that clear cup this is already moist so i don't have to water it you put your clear cup in your colored cup this simulates the underground and it also catches water if you do have to water it. You can put a um, Ziploc bag over top to make the greenhouse effect. Other than that, if you don't want to do that, just make sure you come and spritz the, the leaves every day with a spray bottle. And that's it. You sit and you do that. I do this. I used to do this all day. <sighs> okay. I got rooting hormone powder all over the place. Any questions whatsoever? Hey, Britt Mai, how you doing? Uh-oh, Trina's journey. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. They came in and cut it from. Hold on, hold on. Should I wait until my pomegranate tree finish growing? Finish growing its fruit before transferring it from the container to the ground. Yes, because if you if you pull if it's fruiting right now, it's going to go into shock from you moving it and disrupting the root system. 
So leave it alone. Until you until it's done fruiting or ripening the fruit, just just leave it alone for now. I would. Let's see. Can I see the ingredients or the mixture for the soil? I just I just explained that in the beginning of the video, okay? Um, I live in Illinois. I bought my Meyer lemon tree last year. Just go back to the very beginning of the, the video. Trust me, it's it is it's easy as pie. Uh, I live in Illinois. I bought my Meyer lemon tree last year. All of the leaves fell off, and now it's beautiful for the summer. Should I keep it in the shade this winter? And you're in Illinois. No, bring it in the house for the winter. Yeah. If you're in Illinois, bring your lemon tree in, in the house for the whole winter. Okay, do not leave that outside at all. Led, do you have a passion fruit tree in your orchard? You know what? I used to. I used to. And you know what I end up doing? I end up selling all of my passion fruits. I had the, the purple passion fruit. I had the maypop yellow ones, the wild ones. You know why I sold my passion fruit trees? Because they are literally, literally everywhere here in Columbia, South Carolina. You see, as a matter of fact, there's a wild vine right across my lake on the other side of my land over here, across the creek. I don't need them. I don't need them, so I let them go. They are everywhere. I got videos of me on my mail route. They were at my post office my job they were all over my route so i always had this i still even got seeds if you want them i have passion fruit seeds from all around my city so yeah let me see here analytic gardener how you doing sister say i have a fuyu persimmon tree that has a branch growing I got to reread this. I have a Fuyu persimmon tree that has a branch growing just above the bare root near the ground. Can I take it as a cutting or chili dog it? It's about three feet. The tree struggled this year. Um, I don't know where you are, but I wouldn't try to do it right now at this part of the year because a persimmon tree is like a hardwood and it's like a nut tree. They need a little bit more time to, for those roots to come out. I've done that several times successfully. And one thing I do, I did take note of, it takes a persimmon tree about just as long to root as a pecan tree. Wait till spring. But yeah, if you got a good branch coming off, wait till spring and, and chili dog it right on off of there. Okay. I hope that helped. Hey, New Orleans Gardener. What's up, my friend? How you doing? What's going on? Uh, so we like crumbs says. <laughs> Good evening. I'm a quilter and I just love quilting, but my granddaughter and I started a garden together after watching you and I watch you and Homestead Heart all the time. I want to say thank you to you and your granddaughter. Thank you. And that quilt, and I hope you have a channel. Let me see. Did you say you got a channel? You say you just, you should show your quilt. Okay. You really should. We need more, more crafters and quilters like you on YouTube. Please. I know you good, uh, New Orleans Gardener. T-Nog in the house, y'all. Uh, let me see. Oh, there you, hey, TLC in the garden. I got you. Okay. All right. No more questions. We coming up on that hour mark. And I just showed y'all two cuttings. I'm going to see how fast I can do one more. One more. I'm not even going to say nothing. I'm just going to take that one hole. Soil. That's too much. Soil. Hole in the soil. Take my cutting. Take this whole thing. 
See, you don't want this when you take a cutting. I'm glad I did this. See how that branches off? Don't do that. Let that go. That's a whole nother cutting over there, just smaller. And that one, you just throw to the wolves. Don't do that. When you have all those branches like that, it makes it harder to root. Scratch it up a little bit. Rooting hormone or whatever you want to use. Stick into the hole, touch the bottom, come up about a half inch or so, depending on the size you're cutting. Don't pack it tight. Just make sure it's firm around the cutting. My mix is already wet, so I don't have to worry about wetting it. Take my cup, it has a hole in there, just in case you have to end up watering it. Put it in the color cup. What this does is simulate being under the ground, and it also catches the water, so you can dump it out. You can put a Ziploc bag over top of it, simulating the greenhouse effect, or not just come by and spritz it once a day that's three cuttings right there that's how simple that is that is how simple that is and that what i just showed you will grow into a huge giant lemon tree and have you tons of lemons every single year any questions any questions whatsoever Okay. <clears throat> okay. So I have a small pear tree that bent over to 90 degrees and it has so many branches standing at attention perfectly to try air pruning for the first time. Give it a shot. Give it a shot. That that's the that's a perfect time to start trying to give it a shot. Let's see. I was just looking for any last minute questions. What does sausage dog mean? I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure she meant chili dogs. <laughs> she, she might be hungry. She said, went to sausage dog. J3GS farm in the house. Hey, TL, I mean, TX, Lala, how you doing, sister? It's good to see you in here. J3 in the house. What's up, brother? J3, ain't you in Georgia? You in Georgia, right? J3 GS Farm, you in Georgia? I think I think I did send it to Georgia. Um, so hey, Led, how you doing? Says, how long did it take your Orient pear tree cutting to bear fruit if you started any from cuttings? Um, it just, it differs. It differs. It, it depends on the time of season. It depends on what you're doing. Do you got it in the house? Do you got it outside? How you watering it or lack thereof? It all just depends. There is no cut and dry time because your climate might be different. Where you live might be different. Everything. So for me to give you a cross the board number, I would be lying to you. So it works. You just have to be patient, okay? Those cuttings, you got to be patient. You almost got to kind of just almost forget about them, really. Okay. Hey, Sherry Williams say, from New Orleans, but I live in Alexandria, bought my bought a Meyer lemon uh, LSU fig in low low quats I think this summer keeping on house keeping in the house I think but can't seem to water enough should I replant in a larger pot that's what it's sounding like to me if you if you constantly water and it's constantly drying out but you're keeping them in the house It sounds like they, they need to be up potted, but if you're keeping all those trees in the house, let me give you one little piece of advice from, from true knowledge. Take that low quad tree. Low quad trees are not trees that need to be in pots. They have a super long taproot, just like a nut tree. 
like a pecan tree, they do not need to be in a pot. If they stay in a pot too long, number one, you're going to stunt their growth. And two, that long tap root is going to turn around and spin around that bucket so long it will literally choke itself to death. So you might have a tree for about three or five years. And after a while, you will notice it failing no matter what you do. Like you saying now is drying out constantly. It may not just be lack of water. It may be literally dying. The way to uh, back up from that is take that tree out of the pot. If you see that tap root coiling around that pot, and I think I got a good inkling that that's what's going on, take that tree out that pot and you literally, the root ball, cut it in. Your root ball is going to be shaped like the pot, right? Take one third of the bottom of that off. Literally take a saw, a saw, a hand saw, and cut one third of the bottom of that off. So that tap root can restart again. I promise you, it sounds barbaric. It just works. Here's the other thing too. You have nothing else to lose because if you don't do something critical immediately, tree going to die anyway. So, you know, I would like to see pictures of it before I just pass judgment, but it sounded like either it's super root bound. If it's a, you got a low quad tree, it does not need to be in a container ever, ever, never. Okay. Just like a pecan tree. That's why pecan trees come in long bags or long um, pots because of that tap root. If you disturb that tap root and make it stop growing straight down, you're going to have a problem on your hands. Um, how do you prepare the container? container soil when you move pot plants indoors i would have to see exactly what you're talking about okay i i don't know what kind of pot you have i don't know what plant you're talking about i would need to know everything in detail before i gave you any advice on that because there is no real universal answer to that uh Yeah, analytic gardener. She said, "Yeah, I am a little hungry." She was talking about doing the, the, the sausage dog method. I, I guess I am a little hungry. I, I caught you though. I knew what it was. I knew what you was talking about. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh, J three. I holler at you. I'm gonna holler at you. I thought you was just you just right over you over the around the corner for me, right? J three gs. You just round the corner. I I talked to you. Uh. <clears throat> okay so google says can easily plant between 210 to 250 lemon plants in one acre do you think this is reasonable um where are you e Kang? what are you trying to do that's that's my question to you are you trying are you trying to start a farm or are you trying to Guinness Book of World Record. I don't know what you're going for here, but you got to level with me and let me know what's going on. Because the question that you're asking is like you're trying to fit as many things as you possibly can in every square inch of your land of two acres, I believe you said, right? What are you trying to do? Let me know something because that that's that's going to depict on how I answer it. I don't want to give you no wrong information and I don't know your intentions, okay? If Google said that, remember one thing about Google. Google doesn't even know where you live at. Google doesn't know your soil. Google doesn't know your land because if it's tell if Google is telling you you could plant anywhere from 210 to 250 plants or trees on one acre of your land, Google doesn't know you might have a big five ton boulder sitting in the middle of your land, which takes away from that number. Google doesn't know if this part of your yard or your land is all sand or all red clay. They don't know. You have to walk your land and work your land to find out what you can put on your land where you can put it on your land because just because you have lemon trees do not mean they're going to make it and be able to live everywhere on your land that that's you can't trust google for that you have this is where it comes where you have to put in the work on your land to find out what trees belong where 
is places on all of our land. It's a lot of us have homesteads. It's a lot of us have backyard gardens. You can't plant anything anywhere all the time because you might have a spot that stays wet. And citrus trees hate wet soil. They hate soggy, wet soil. Your tree will die. It will fail either quick or a slow death if you leave it in soggy ground. So you have to work your ground before you going off. You, you, you calculate numbers, and that's not how gardening and farming works. You got to work that land and find out what you can plant, when and where, okay? You have to put that work in. Google is not going to tell you that, okay? Let me see. Trust me on that. Trust me, because you'll go out there trying to plant all kind of stuff, and it's just going to keep on dying. It's just going to all keep dying. Uh, Dave Busby said, this is what I learned from him five years ago. Dave, right, bruh, right. B. Rich said, Led, I'm, I'm doing the pineapple top growing process. This this thing is so big, will it make it indoors during the winter? Absolutely. I'm going to tell you something about that too. Should I place it in a grow tent? You don't have to place a pineapple in anything, my brother. You don't even hardly have to water the pineapple during the winter in your house. You're going to see spider mites growing on your pineapple. You're going to see all kinds of stuff start moving in the pineapple hotel like uh SpongeBob, nothing is going to hurt that pineapple. Nothing. And then when summer comes, you just set it right back outside and let the water hit it. You, it's pineapple tops is one of those things, man. It's almost like a um, a aloe vera plant. You almost don't have to do anything. Just they act like succulents. It's almost like you don't have to do anything. Well, it's it's a form of cactus, kind of. You know, you don't got to do nothing to them. I wouldn't bother putting them in a grow tent. I, I tried that one year and then I just stopped doing it because I had so many. And the ones that wasn't in a grow tent worked out better because, you know, when you're in your grow tent in the house, you get the spider mites. You get all kind of weird stuff growing inside there to the point you don't even want to go in the doggone grow tent after a while because you know you're going to have to get them webs out your face and everything else. It's best just, you know. Let's see. All right, I'm going to give it three more minutes, y'all. Three more minutes. Chance, I say I have, I have, I've had great success with keeping, neglecting fruit trees in fabric pots. You know, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm, I'm going to say this. I hate them pots. <laughs> My wife got a ton of them things. I, I just don't like those fabric pots. Uh, pots. I just don't. And this is why I don't like the fabric pots. Do they work? Yes, they work. But they are so cumbersome and clumsy. And then if you leave them in a spot longer than a year, the bottom rots out. So usually those cloth pots have handles or something on it. You go to try to move it, which I have Several trees out there that I've tried to move. I pick the pot up. The tree stays on the ground with the soil. And now I got to figure out what the hell I'm going to do. With, I just don't care for them things. They just too gimmicky for me. Okay. Hey, Diane. Say I'm growing a lemon tree from seed. It's about six years old now. And I haven't, and it haven't fruited yet. Would it be good to do a cutting from it absolutely not <laughs> if you grew a lemon tree from a seed you have no idea when that is going to fruit and when it finally does fruit your fruit might taste like poop and you don't even know you you want to see something cool want to see a scary story if you how many people i'm gonna take a, a poll real quick Okay, how many people, how many people have grown, 
I don't think I got everything with me. How many people have grown your fruit tree, your lemon or citrus or something from seed? How many people? Show of hand. Show of hand. How many people say me? I did whatever you want or, or raise your hand. How many people have grown your fruit tree, your citrus, whatever from seed, and you're wondering when you're going to get fruit? While y'all saying me, I'm going to just explain to you again, the seed of most fruit trees are just like people. Just because you took it from this delicious apple or this delicious pear or this delicious plum does not necessarily mean it's going to be that exact fruit. It's just like a kid. Daddy was a good looking man. Mama was a prom queen, beautiful woman. And Junior, well, Junior is Junior. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Junior don't look like dad or mom. Junior looks kind of like Uncle Philip, the one to come to the backyard barbecue and everybody like, oh, I'll tell you, I swear. You sure that's your baby? Right? Uncle Philip ain't got nothing to do with Junior. Junior actually did come from the good looking mom and the good looking daddy. Just that DNA just didn't hit right with Junior. It, that's Uncle Junior's DNA down the line somewhere. It's just how it works. Fruit trees ain't no different. You may get an apple from the DNA from the crustacean period. You don't know. You know, you might be eating on an apple or a plum from way back when, when Jesus was walking the earth. You don't know. So with that, everybody's saying, yes, me, 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 me. This is what I want you to do. If you have that tree growing and it, um, you don't know what the fruit is going to end up like. And you don't know if you're even going to be alive to actually see it fruit. That's where for years I've been showing people how to graft, how to graft. If you have a lemon tree, if you have a citrus tree, listen close. If you have a citrus tree, you can pretty much take just about any citrus cutting from any citrus tree and take that little seedling that you just grew from a seed, cut it off and take that cutting. Say you get a cutting from me and you graft that cutting right on in there. So the root stock is that seedling that you grew. But now this branch ends up being the exact tree that I just sent you and it will grow strong and, and produce lots of fruit for you while you wait for the rest of this busted tree to give you a, a, a junior, if you will. You get what I'm saying? So you don't have to wait to find out whether that fruit is going to be good or bad. I had a friend years ago and she told me she grew a peach tree from seed. And I told her this exact same thing. This was probably eight or nine years ago here on YouTube. The tree finally fruited. It was a peach tree. She'd been waiting all these years that I'd known her for this tree to produce fruit. It actually produced fruit and it actually produced a lot of fruit. Every piece of that fruit on that tree tasted like deer turds. She tried to taste it. She tried to get her husband to taste it. She tried to get her daughter to taste it. Everything about this tree was wicked. <laughs> Everything. She waited till the next year. She was like, maybe this since it was the first year of fruit, maybe it's just, you know, you know, your first year always a little. Eh. She waited that second year and they tasted even worse than the first year. She just cut the whole peach tree off and I showed her how to graft onto that peach tree. I sent her a piece of peach tree from my orchard out here and sent it to her. She got that cutty and I showed her how to grab. Now, I don't know. I haven't talked to her in a long time, but the last I seen it, that peach tree was growing and giving her fruit. So I will put that link to that video at the end of this video. OK, so you can just click on it and watch how I grabbed. I show you up close and personal. So you don't mess nothing up. You 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 can't you can't miss you can't miss it. And to be honest with you, 
I also have, if, just go look at my grafting playlist. I teach my, my, babies, my baby boy how to graft. And I did that so he will always know if you go grafting all throughout the world, nobody got to know, you have food everywhere. Okay. Hey, Q-Dub, how you doing? Say, so, hey, Uncle Led, I'm in zone 8A, Augusta, Georgia. Can I leave my lemon plants outside during the cold months? Q-Dub, normally I would say yes. Normally, normally, because I got... I got citrus in the ground. Normally, I would say, oh, yeah, definitely. But I'm going to be honest with you. In the last couple of years, the weather been so bizarre. I, I'm not going to answer that. Um, if you still have them in pots, play it safe. You know, watch the weather. If if the temperature start dipping just, just way too low, go on, bring them in the house. Or cover them up put, with some, some moving blankets or something or some some canvas tarps or something, don't leave them unprotected. The weather just been too strange. The weather took out my um, ruby red grapefruit tree. The weather took out my Mexicola Grande avocado. The weather, my avocado and my grapefruit been growing for years, giving me fruit and it killed it. So I'm just not putting nothing past the weather anymore. I don't have anything to prove. Okay, so uh, there we go, y'all. I'm sorry, I end up doing it an hour and a half anyway. So for the last eight minutes, any quick questions I can answer quick. So uh, same with house avocado, yes. Anytime, Q Dub. Anytime, my brother. Uh, Leslie, you said I feel like St. Louis. We jumped a zone up. Exactly. The zones have changed. Like my zone, the summer is more like Florida now, where I am. If I'm normally an eight A, I'm going to give it like a nine A right now. The way it be acting. Okay. All right. I'm going to get out of here, y'all. I'm going to leave y'all alone. I hope this helped you. Just remember, for everybody that I see at Survival Slumber Party, Survival Camp, Greenhouse Lounge, I'm going to be, this is going to be part of the giveaway. Okay. So just in case you're showing up legally in South Carolina, is not leaving the state, you know, okay, legally, legally. So I'm going to finish doing all these cuttings because I got about five or six more trees out there just like this that I got to do. Uh, let me see. Can I use a store avocado pit to plant? Yes, you can. Thank you, New Orleans Gardener. Thank you. Say so she said, everybody have an awesome night, everybody. Let's see what else we got. We got we got five minutes left. Five minutes. Rio's Family Garden. I'm counting down. You're so welcome, Rio's Family Garden. Thank you. Uh, Birch River Farm. River Birch Farm said, I really hope I can meet you at Myrtle Beach in February. Thank you. I hope I meet you too. Right, uh, Tanja. Legally, legally. I had to make sure legally. I'm I'm biding by the law legally. What whatever happened at, after Myrtle Beach ain't none of my business. I'm giving them away legally. No sales, free of charge. They're gifts legally. All right. So, all right. Okay. Hey, Karen Brown. Thank you. Everybody have a wonderful night. All right. I'm gonna just go ahead and end it now. And what time? I don't even know what time it is. I'm going to cut a few more of these down and get them prepped up, ready to go. Because in February, in February, all of this stuff going to be rooted. These won't be cuttings by February. All of these will be little trees. I guarantee that. Uh, 
Hey, TLC in the garden say from vision preparedness tip on olive trees. Vision preparedness. Is he in here? I was in vision live today. Man, y'all have no idea what I went through. I'm, I'm, I had to take a shower. I was soaking wet. I got caught in a storm. Oh, it's a lot of, lot of questions. Hey, Trina's journey says, I'm always battling those white grubs. Is there anything I can do to reduce the population? Um, you can use chemicals, but I wouldn't advise that. Um, I always get the grubs in my containers too. They just never do anything. People get so freaked out about, oh, they're going to eat the roots. I have never, ever, never, ever lost a tree in a container due to grubs. And when I tell you, when I say I'm about to put one in the ground, a tree in the ground from the container, and I see about 20 of those grubs in there that I feed to the chickens, my tree is still healthy and alive. I've never had a problem, ever. You know, they're a little gross, but if you got chickens, trust me, the chickens love them. Uh, blessing led i got my elderberry cutting from you last year it seems like the growth is at a standstill is there something i can do from an elderberry you must got it in a container if you have your elderberry cutting in a container i just said this the other day you will stunt the growth of that elderberry elderberries are not to be contained they're a lot like me they need to run free and wild okay so elderberry need to go on the ground I bet you you got it in a container, don't you? Bet you. Uh, let me, let me, because I seen something else. We, this time ticking out. Okay. See, I'm looking for vision, but I don't. I don't. I didn't see him. What kind of? What did he need to know about um, the grubs? There he is, Derek. There go my brother right there. Vision, what's up, my brother? Say, uh, I vision. I need to talk to you about woo. We got a lot to discuss, brother. We gonna have to hook up. We gonna have to hook up for real. Uh, y'all have me. Vi please go check out the live and what all the brothers was talking about on Vision Preparedness channel tonight. About I'm gonna let you go over there. Please go to Vision Pre Preparedness and check out his last live stream, which was tonight. I had, I was busy riding my bike in a rainstorm, mind you, and I had to stop. So I had to be part of this live stream because between all the brothers in there, the knowledge that was being dropped, I had, I had to stop. And speak. I literally was on the side of the road. You hear me? It was, you got to go see it. But uh, Vision... No, I'm mad props to you, man. Say thanks for all you do for the community, man. Thank you for all you do for the community as well, brother Vision. Now you want to know about the olives, though, and I need to know exactly what you what you needed. We ticking down here. I got that one. Hey, Trisha, how you doing? She said, "Call me Farmer Led." <laughs> okay here we go do you only do fruit or do you do vegetables as well i do everything the only reason if you're new you must be new the only reason you're not seeing my garden garden i shut my whole we're in the process of moving from this house to our land so we literally shut the garden down. I am digging up all my trees. I already got all my garden stuff up. And now it's just grass out there. As a matter of fact, it's tense right now where my garden used to be. Um, so I do everything. Just at this moment, I'm in a crazy transition right now. So my gardening game going to start back up pro probably, probably this fall. If not, definitely next spring for sure. I got you, Vision. I got you, bro. Okay, okay, here he is. Say, my olive trees are growing. Will they produce in two seasons or longer? 
if you have those, I cannot remember the name, the black olives, what are they called? Oblique or something. Don't don't quote me because I know I'm gonna mess that, that word up. If you have those black olives that they sell commonly everywhere, those olive trees grow so profusely. There's almost nothing. I got olive trees out on my land with olives on them right now, and I'm not even out there. They're sitting in the drought, not being watered, and they still got olives on them. Those trees, somebody tell me what the name of that black olive is. Start with an O, I think. I can, yeah, that's a with an A. That's it. Uh, yeah, that's it, Sandy. He, here's what it's called right here. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Everybody has this common black olive. I love them. I hate green olives. I love black olives. But yes, it's almost nothing you got to do to an olive tree. As a matter of fact, usually when you see them in a big box store somewhere, they already have little fruit on them. So it I'm not even going to say depending on what size, because mine is in bush form. I used to have them in uh, standard form until they got washed away in, in the floods. But I got them in bush form. They still fruit. So I'd say yes in a year or two, two years or so. Yeah, I will say yes. Okay, and that's what I thought. New Orleans Gardener says, I have an olive tree. It is growing beautifully. I, I knew she did. I wanted to say something, but I wasn't quite sure. Thank you for that, New Orleans Gardener. Go over, check out New Orleans Gardener. She'll show you her olive tree. Okay, no problem. Thank you, thank you. I'm going to get out of here, y'all. That's been an hour and a half. I hope everything I showed y'all today with my obsession, because... You know, sometimes you can be a little bit over obsessed with things or people or people or people. You can be obsessed to the point it drives you crazy. You know, if you don't get a handle on it quick enough, it'll drive you mad. So with that being said, everybody have a wonderful night. Live Farmer 73 while I sit here and deal with my obsession. 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 Right. Okay. Everybody, thank you so much for coming in here tonight. Lev Farmer 73, I love you and I am out. Oh, wait. I, I, I forgot my piece. I love you until you give me a chance not to. And I'm out. Peace. Good night, everybody.